Hey everybody, I'm Holly, aka the Scientology Geek, and welcome to the 31st episode of Going Over the Data Series. Today we start policy letter number 25 for the series, and I can't believe that we're already on 31 episodes. This is absolutely insane, and it's taking so long, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get this done. So, if you want to see this content, then feel free to share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment, like, tell your friends, your family, show them what Scientology really has in its in its volumes and in their, their so-called database of information. Because it seems like most people think of Xenu, Tom Cruise, and some of the surface level stuff. They aren't really sure about what is is, I guess, deeper in the Scientology iceberg. So if you want access to any of these data series, the volumes, the flag orders, base orders, any of the documentation, feel free to contact me at scientologeek at gmail.com. That'll be in the description. Same with the link to my Discord server where you can hit me up there. Also with a valid Gmail address because I am sending out the invites through Google. So I am not sharing links. I am sending out email invites. Without further ado, let's get started. So we have the HCO policy letter of the 19th of March, 1972, issue two, called Learning to Use Data Analysis. After one has studied data analysis, he's expected to be able to use its principles easily and swiftly. The barriers to being able to use data analysis are, in the order of frequency, number one, misunderstood words. One has not gotten the definitions of the words used. This does not mean new words. It's usually old common words. It's not just long words, it's usually more little ones. To handle this, one takes each policy letter or chapter in turn and looks it over carefully to see what words he cannot rapidly define. To help in this, one uses an e-meter and method for word clearing, which is the method of using a meter to see if are there any words in this policy misunderstood. Any upset or antagonism or boredom felt comes only from a misunderstood word or misunderstood words. Totally disagree. Um, any upset, antagonism, or boredom probably comes from the fact that they're sick of defining words that they already know the answer to just because they can't rattle them off verbatim as to what the definitions are. They still understand how to use them in the proper context. You don't need to know the definition of a word in order to be able to use it in its proper context. So, like, the word the, the word and, the word at, you may not know what those definitions are, but you understand how they work in a sentence and you understand how to place them. Uh, this is definitely resembling study tech. And the fact that you use an e-meter to find your misunderstood words means, again, the pre-clear is not trusted. The pre-clear's answers are not taken as valuable. Well, what only matters is meter first, pre-clear second. So if the meter reads it, then they cover it. If the meter doesn't read, then it doesn't cover it. Number two, the person has himself an out point in his routine thinking. No. This is found and handled by what is called an HC, or Hubbard Consultant, list. This list assessed on a meter, detects and handles this. Again, on a meter, person doesn't matter. And out point, according to them, could be anything. So the fact that it's, the fact that it's on this list, I'm kind of curious to see what the next possible reasons are. Number three, lack of knowledge of an existing or an ideal scene. This is handled by observing the existing scene directly or indirectly by reports, and for the ideal, study of the basic policy of the scene, which gives one its ideal, its expected products and form of organization. Number four, not having studied the data series, handled by studying it properly. Number five, not having studied data analysis from the viewpoint of needing to apply it. Number six, thinking one already knows all about analyzing and data, handled by looking over some past failures and realizing they could have been prevented by a proper collection of data and analyzing it. Number seven. Tossing off reasons personally on one's own personal area, which are usually just excuses or justifications and not whys. I was too tired. I should have been tougher. They were just bums anyway, which loads up one's own life with wrong whys, handled by being more alert to and more honest about the causes and motives of one's life and the scene and doing a better analysis. Number eight, confusing errors with outpoints, handled by practice. Number nine, confusing outpoints with whys handled by learning to observe and better study of data analysis. Number 10, too narrow a situation, handled by getting more data and observing the scene more broadly. 11, missing omitted data or particles or people as a frequent outpoint, handled by knowing the ideal scene better, 
what should be there and isn't. The beginner. When one begins to apply data analysis, he is often still trying to grasp the data about data analysis rather than the outpoints in the data. He has become more familiar with the data series. Further, one may not realize the ease with which one can acquire the knowledge of an ideal scene. An outpoint is simply an illogical departure from the ideal scene. By comparing the existing scene with the ideal scene, one easily sees the outpoints. To know the ideal scene, one has only to work out the correct products for it. If these aren't getting out, then there's a departure. One can then find the outpoints of the various types and then locate a Y, and in that way, open the door to handling. And by handling, one is simply trying to get the scene to get out its products. Unless one proceeds in this fashion, from product back to establishment, one can't analyze much of anything. One merely comes up with errors. The definition and nature of products is covered in several policy letters, and especially in HCO policy letter 13th of March 72, Production and Establishment Orders and Products from ESTO series number 5. Now we will cover ESTO series number 5 uh, when we do the ESTO series. I don't know when that's going to be. An existing scene is as good as it gets out its products, not as good as it's painted or carpeted or given public relations boosts. So for any scene, manufacturing or fighting a war, or being a hostess at a party, there are products. People who lead pointless lives are very unhappy people. Even the idler or dilettante is happy only when he has a product. There's always a product for any scene. The analyst, when he begins, may get the wrong product. He may get a doing this instead of something one can have. And he may look upon a half-completion or half-done thing as a completed product. All this makes his data analysis faulty. As he can't figure out an ideal scene, he then has nothing to compare the existing scene to. It's simply a matter of the cost and time involved in not or half getting a product compared to the ideal scene of a really valuable product with exchange value and what it takes to get it. These two things can be worlds apart. The trail that leads to a Y that will close the gap is plainly marked with one kind or another of outpoints. Where the most and biggest are, there is the Y. Found, the real Y and actual handling will move the existing toward ideal. Hideously enough, what I say about products is true. Just because you say what I say is true does not make what you say true. That's like the Bible saying the Bible is true because the Bible says it. Circular reasoning. Even a government could have a product. Like... A prosperous, happy country. An intelligence agency often muffs its product, such as a properly briefed head of state. But to do it, the head of state would have to have a product concerning other nations, like friendly, cooperative allies, which are a help and no threat, or some other product. Otherwise, the agency would wind up going straight out of the intelligence business and being required to conduct its business by assassination of foreign notables or other actions to do handlings based on wrong whys. As there would be no product, there could not really be an ideal scene. If there's no ideal scene, then there's no way to compare the existing scene. Thus, outpoints would expose situations, but no why would really be possible, as there's no ideal scene to approach. One's often heard some agency or activity say, Where the hell are we going, anyway? Translated, this would be, We haven't had any ideal scene set up for us. And translated further, The policymakers have no product in view. So they aren't going any place really, and lack of an objective would cause them to go down, and lack of a product would cause them to be miserable. That's the way life has been running. Uh, he's just throwing his own filter over everything. And this is actually where we are going to end off for this episode. We covered that there are barriers, according to Hubbard, to be able to use the data analysis, and a lot of it is blame the victim. It's blame the person who is trying to apply it where it doesn't seem to be going right. Not because the data series is wrong, but it's because the person never knows what they're doing. Again, it's just a way for Scientology to have this level of, of perfection and for anybody who tries to apply it and to find out it doesn't work to have this, this constant feeling of inadequacy that they're not doing it right, that they're not learning correctly that they have misunderstood words that they that they need to basically be better than they already are despite the fact that they're already trying their hardest we learned that what reads on the meter again matters more than what the pre-clear says and we are told that every scene has a product or products and that if someone knows what they are this can help them evaluate properly and move the scene to be ideal I did forget to mention one thing in my last video. I am wearing a Coca-Cola Polar Bear onesie. Um, I am not sponsored by Coca-Cola. So just going to get that out there ahead of time. I am not sponsored by Coca-Cola. No one is sponsoring this this channel. 
right now, I hope. Um, but please do. Uh, other than that, feel free to share with your friends, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do what you gotta do to let people know how crazy this, this organization actually is. And I will talk to all of you later. See ya.